Let's talk about handmade shoes. Specifically, I want to talk about Chinese handmade shoemakers and the product and the quality of the product that they deliver. There's really a huge gap in this particular segment of the market because while some people have one shoemaker, or maybe they even have two, very few have had the opportunity to see all of these shoemakers side by side and really understand the differences and have that comprehensive look both at the aesthetics, the unboxing, and just overall kind of like price to value proposition that you're getting from them. Whenever it comes time to evaluate either the quality of an individual pair of shoes, you have the objective details, you have the subjective. I'm going to focus on objective for this video and in the subsequent ones when I do a deeper dive into how these shoes have worn, how the break-in experience has been, the fit, these more unique opinion-based uh, details, we'll touch on those then. This is strictly going to go over the overarching uh, kind of summary of who these shoemakers are, what it is that you should expect when you receive it, and just being able to see that side by side. Let's jump right in, and the three shoemakers that we're going to be looking at is Yearn Shoemaker, Helen Shoemaker, otherwise known as BW Shoe Factory on Instagram, and Acme Shoemaker. With that said, let's take a look at Yearn Shoemaker. I'll link the unboxing videos right here that I did for each of these pairs, but let's start with a little bit of background about Yearn Shoemaker. This was founded by Phoenix Fu, and he is a gentleman who had exposure to the traditional shoemaking methods of Northampton, England. He was looking for other uh, comparable partners to uh, uh, go into this venture with, and he was able to collaborate with a few other gentlemen that both have uh, traditional classic training from Northampton throughout Europe in shoemaking, and that is really where the foundation of Yearn Shoemaker came to be. The pairs that I have from Yearn Shoemaker were provided by William at Ardard in London, which is a small uh, menswear accessory shop. Now let's talk about Helen Shoemaker. Their main storefront is Instagram and social media. Helen's workshop has been in existence for about 10 years. They really focus over the last probably three or four years on high quality, high end, fully handmade shoes for men. And with that, they offer a few different ranges, kind of the hand welted with machine finishing, machine stitched outsoles, and then they also offer the fully made to measure and bespoke level fit with a fully hand welted, hand lasted and hand stitched outsole quality product. Based on those different tiers, you're gonna see different price points, but ultimately this was 5,000 Chinese won and the rough conversion of that is right around 700, $720, I believe, at the time that I got this pair of shoes. Next we have Acme Shoemaker. They really kind of came onto the scene, as you may say, uh, like three or three and a half years ago, and were offering, still offering, a an extremely high level, fully handmade, bespoke spec. But they've most recently uh, began to offer this Marvel line, which is still completely handmade, but it is at a lower, more accessible price point than what their standard main line is. This shoe here is $950. That does not include shoe trees, less time and uh, you know actual handwork going into the finishing of the shoe. Starting with Yearn, these are presented very well. These come with uh, you know very very unique, high quality shoe bags, a matching shoe cloth. The overall experience, both aesthetically as well as from like a sensory experience, like hands-on, um, kind of hit like the nail on the head for both the price point, but also the, uh, at least my understanding of what their goal is and how they intend to uh, deliver upon that goal. Helen Shoemaker, obviously this falls in between the price point of Acme and of Yearn Shoemaker. It's closer to Acme than it is to Yearn and... Uh, in the experience that I've had so far based on the box and the shoes, I would say it, it hits right in that middle range. I would say the, the box is very quality 
box. It's going to protect the shoes. It's including very nice uh, shoe bags. But I'll say the presentation is not as clean or as refined as that of Yearn or of Acme. Now, take that for what it's worth again, because maybe that's not something that is of importance to you, and maybe that doesn't really degrade the value at all for you. It wouldn't for me. Now, Acme Shoemaker. Now, their Marvel line, again, this is their more accessible price point. I won't say affordable or entry level because it's still $950. But with that, you get a lot of the refinements that you don't get in the lower price points, and you should. That makes sense. This shoe box is different than the shoe box that you get with their mainline shoes, and it is still of very, very good materials. The overall uh, intent of the shoe box protecting the shoes during transit and storage, it does that perfectly. But it does have a very nice presentation of the details, the specifications of the shoes, the order, all that information on the box, a very nice logo, and again, the whole aesthetic that you get in this package from Acme Shoemaker, the shoe bags, it is probably the most refined and elegant of the bunch, and that is consistent with it having the highest price point. So as we look at these different shoemakers, with Yearn Shoemaker, this is the one pair that has a machine stitched outsole, and this pair is also $400, whereas the next pair is starting at $700, and the pair after that starts at $950. The other details here, just about the overall execution of the pattern, the last, the materials, I think Yearn does a very good job of all of that. This is suede from the Charles F. Stead tannery out of England. The uh, pattern on this, you can see the proportions of the toe cap, the vamp, the uh, monk strap over the instep, the heel, how the heel sits on top of the leather heel stack. All of those are done very well, very proportional, and I think it complements itself very, very nicely. Looking at those same breakout of proportions and materials from Helen Shoemaker, this is Weinheimer calf, very well regarded and very prominent black box calf. The hand stitch outsole details throughout the blind welded waist, the bespoke detail around the heel where you have that notch transition from the blind welded waist to the leather heel stack. Acme Shoemaker now, I would take what I've just said about the last two and step it up just slightly. Their pattern here, very, very well done. With the double monk strap, you can see there is one, uh, one buckle hole on the bottom strap and there are three on the top. The uh, proportions of the toe cap, the vamp, the double monk strap, as well as the heel, the construction of the heel with the single seam down the back, all of these are methodically planned out. That planning, that time, that costs money. So there's uh, an additional cost. This price point is there for that reason. Basically, I've already worn these at least like two times a week for each pair since I've had them. And really trying to keep track of like how long did the break-in take? Are there any issues with the break-in? Are there any persisting issues with fit? Either something that's too large, too small, and is that improving or is it getting worse? over the long term, I hope is really going to benefit you because depending on if your budget goes from the 400 to yearn or the 950 to Acme, whether you can expect to get exactly what you're hoping at that price point. And moreover, if you're trying to make a decision between one and the other, whether or not the value that you get at 400 exceeds the value that you get at 700 or the value that you get at 950. That's really how I approach this when it comes time to determining do I spend more money and get this shoe or do I stick at, you know, kind of the original price point I was aiming for. It's really like when you pay that additional cost, like what is it that you get and does that detail make it worth it to me? Stay tuned. Let me know what you think about this so far and what you'd like to see in the next iteration of this video. Appreciate you guys watching as always and we'll see you soon.